Hey everybody, Yuri here, and for today's How Do You Do That, we're going to share a few quick tips on how to properly place antennas. For this video, I'm going to primarily focus on the half-wave omnidirectional antenna, which is the most common antenna that you're going to see in a wireless system. If you want to learn more about the other antennas that you can use, my colleague Paul has another video that you can watch that shows all the options. To know everything you need to know about placing antennas, you really have to understand two things, how antennas work and antenna diversity. Let's take a quick look at this antenna. This is a half wavelength dipole omnidirectional antenna, which operates something like this. They're dipoles because these antennas are actually two conductors that are lined up. And it's called half wave antenna because as it's kind of visible here, depending on its length, it'll be most efficient at about the half wavelength of some specific wave that it's receiving or transmitting. The wavelengths in our G57 spectrum, for example, are about one and a half to two feet long. This is why we have options to order these antennas in different frequency bands. They're going to all be different physical lengths. It's also important to note that even though these antennas are defined as omnidirectional, they receive and transmit in a donut shape with nothing coming out or being received on the top of the antenna or at the very bottom. Secondly, most modern wireless systems use some type of diversity, which is a very fancy word for avoiding dropouts by using two or more antennas at different locations. There are lots of different types of diversity, but having more than one antenna is always the key. Now let's look at some tips. Number one, always try to keep a direct unobstructed sight line between the transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna. Here's a fun one. Take a look at your microwave. When you're cooking up some food, you can see inside the microwave, but you certainly can't feel the waves that are being used to cook your food. That's because the wavelength of light is in the hundreds of nanometers, while the wavelength of a microwave is about 12 centimeters, way bigger. Those little tiny openings in the door are big enough to let light through for you to see, but are way too small to let microwaves through. Now take a look at a chain link fence or a metal cage, for example. You can see right through that too, right? Well, unfortunately, radio waves generally can't. Remember that the wavelength of waves that we use in wireless communication is generally about a foot or longer, which is bigger than those openings. So to summarize, there are a ton of obstacles to radio waves out there, especially things that are also electrical conductors, like any kind of metal surface or people's bodies, including your own if you're wearing a body pack. So make sure to mount the antennas up high above people and keep them visible to the transmitter. Second, for diversity to be effective, the antennas should be at least a quarter wavelength apart from each other, and ideally one full wavelength apart from each other. In the G57 band we've been talking about, that's at least four inches and ideally about a foot and a half to two feet apart. Diversity only works if the signals received at each antenna are sufficiently different, and if the antennas are too close, then there's no diversity. You can move the antennas apart further than one wavelength, but that's not going to really improve the diversity at that point. However, you might find it necessary to keep one that has a sight line. Number three, place the antennas at 45 degrees from the vertical, like this. In a perfect world, because these waves are polarized, receiving and transmitting antennas work best when they're in the same exact orientation to each other. But in real life, on stage for example, transmitters will probably be changing orientations a lot. Additionally, you can't predict how waves are going to reflect off of surfaces when you're in a room. So orienting your antennas this way helps minimize dropouts due to any changes in polarization and due to reflections. Number four, do not orient these antennas horizontally. In general, you do not want these to be parallel to any nearby surfaces, especially metal ones. Finally, number five, it is actually possible for your transmitter to be too close to your receiver. We generally recommend that transmitting antennas and receiving antennas are at least 10 feet apart. Otherwise, you might have an RF overload. And that's it. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll see you next time.